This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Check out the extended version of this video by signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at the link in the description. How would you feel if you found out that someone had used AI to generate your voice saying something you'd never said aloud? Fans of Anthony Bourdain have been reckoning this question over the last few weeks when it was revealed that the director of Roadrunner, a documentary about the life and subsequent suicide of Anthony Bourdain, used artificial intelligence to generate audio clips of Bourdain. And while this reveal certainly prompted a negative response on social media, it also raised a larger question surrounding the ethics of synthetic media and deepfakes. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jordan. I'm a PhD student and science communicator who loves talking about emerging technologies and artificial intelligence. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel and check out the Nebula Plus version of this video for an in-depth discussion of how voice cloning works. To give a little bit of context, the documentary Roadrunner is comprised of video and audio footage from Anthony Bourdain's life, from his shows to footage that hasn't yet been released to the public. So a lot of the content from the film is content that people who are fans of Bourdain have not seen yet, but is content that Bourdain himself made or actively participated. However, there are a few minutes of audio present in the film that were actually generated using voice cloning, a technique that uses artificial intelligence to generate audio of someone speaking that sounds realistically like them, but is something that they've never said in real life. In this case, the audio generated was a narration of emails that Bourdain himself wrote, which adds to the uncomfortable ethical quandary that came up when this was revealed seemingly accidentally in an interview that the director did. And from what I can tell, a lot of the discomfort surrounding the director's choice to use voice cloning to narrate these scenes comes from the fact that this wasn't actually disclosed in the documentary. So if this hadn't slipped out in that interview, audiences wouldn't have known that that wasn't Bourdain speaking at the time. Interestingly though, this isn't the first time that someone has used machine learning methods to create audio or video footage of a person who had previously passed, nor is it arguably an example of someone using such methods to misrepresent the thoughts or opinions of the person being cloned. There's a great New Yorker article on this topic if you want to read more in depth from some researchers and journalists who deal in AI ethics all the time. But in short, a lot of the other examples of synthetic media being used to replicate the voices of the deceased have been in contexts where either we wouldn't expect a replication of someone's real voice. So for example, an actress from The Simpsons voice was actually recreated after she had passed in order to have her character reprise its role on the show. And in that case, because we're listening to a character voice, that use of synthetic media and that use of artificial intelligence is less concerning and generally less jarring because we're not representing the actress's opinions or thoughts we're performing for our character. And in the case of the Nixon deepfake, which was generated by researchers at the MIT Media Lab, which I mentioned in an earlier video that I did on deepfakes, there was a lot of disclosure about the fact that that video was a deepfake so that no one going in had any misconceptions about what they were watching. And while synthetic media has been used to insert people who are deceased into popular modern media, most of the time everyone watching it knows that that person is in fact deceased and did not participate in this show or commercial or whatever it is that you happen to be watching. In short, while there's certainly growing pains to be expected as emerging technologies continue to integrate into our daily lives, including things like deepfakes and synthetic media, I think that a lot of the discomfort around this particular example of synthetic media has a lot to do with just a lack of disclosure. However, since this news came out, the director has come forward and said that he got this decision approved by Bourdain's close family friends, as well as his ex-wife. However, Many of those people have come out and said that they weren't aware of how AI was going to be used to replicate Bourdain's voice or likeness, including the specificity of the narration of these few scenes. In short, while we spent a lot of time on this channel talking about fairly clear cut cases where synthetic media has either 
not been used for particularly positive purposes when it comes to revenge porn or used for relatively innocuous purposes when it comes to generating photos of people who don't exist, creating a deepfake of someone's voice using the words that they themselves wrote but never said aloud exists in a weird gray zone that everyone seems a little bit uncomfortable with. And this includes Bourdain's loved ones who don't seem to have been properly looped into this decision and made public statements after the interview came out saying that they didn't realize the extent to which his likeness was going to be replicated. And to be clear, I'm not making this video because I think I have an answer to this question. I don't think I do. But I'm making this video because I think that this is a quandary that we're going to come across increasingly over the next several years as synthetic media becomes a bigger part of our lives. And at the end of the day, documentaries aren't exactly journalism as evidenced by every Netflix documentary that ever comes out and the criticisms of it that immediately follow. Personally, I think that the bigger issue when it comes to the Anthony Bourdain deepfake in particular is the lack of disclosure around it. I think that that should have been made clear in the documentary so that audiences knew that this wasn't real audio of him reading his emails. But I don't necessarily think that the actual generation and usage of the deepfake is that bad. After all, there aren't really any clear-cut rules around how we use this type of synthetic media. Now, the point of this video wasn't to get too far into the details of how voice cloning actually works, but I did end up getting into the details of that in the Nebula Plus version of this video. If you're new to my channel, Nebula is a creator-built platform where you get to watch my videos ad-free and some of your favorite creators, including myself, can create and experiment with awesome content without having to worry about demonetization or paying tribute to the YouTube algorithm. We're thrilled to be partnering with CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. Interested in learning more about foods from cultures around the world? Check out Food Markets, a series that takes you through markets across Europe. And where CuriosityStream is all about big-budget nonfiction documentaries, we're building Nebula so that education -y creators have a place to make content that might not work as well on YouTube. On Nebula, you'll find ad-free videos from some of your favorite creators, from Marquez Brownlee to Neurotransmissions to Tearsu, as well as my Nebula Plus content, which includes extended versions of the videos you see on my channel. You'll also find Nebula Originals, like Tom Scott's Game Show Money, or a very good trivia show where I won $500 for drawing a very nice circle. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code JORDAN, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. That's less than $15 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and getting to see that Nebula Plus content. So sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula using the promo code JORDAN or at curiositystream.com slash JORDAN. Otherwise, if you like this video, let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out the video I did on Tom Scott's channel where I made a deep fake of him, including voice cloning, if you're curious as to what that sounds like. And otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Substack, basically anywhere at Jordan B. Harrod, and I will see you guys next week.